and this is a little bit of like a remotely different recorded guitar stuff. So welcome everybody to another episode of Guitar Stuff. Today I would like to talk about the different positions of guitarists when you play. How high or how low can you hold your guitar when you play standing and sitting? There's two positions where you can put your guitar. You've got two legs, so there's two legs to put the guitar on. And I want to talk you through the pros and the cons of each position. I like this environment, man. <laughs> I'm on vacation. All right, you guys, let's start with the classical guitar. The classical guitar has two of these cutaways. Um, do you even call them cutaways? I don't know. Right leg, left leg. Which is better, which is right, which is wrong? There is no right, there is no wrong. It's a matter of taste. Let's start with the position on the left leg, which is the classical position. When you play classical, is this guitar even in tune? Ah, good enough. When you play classical music, you mostly need something. Ah, oh, God, oh man. My body is completely sore. This is off the record and pretty much on a side note. I decided to, um, you know, right before the tour, I have this three week plan how to get like in shape and be fit and all my cardio and stuff. And I decided to go do this. You're my motherfucker! I don't know what I was thinking. And uh, by the way, if you just want to laugh your ass off about me trying to box, there's going to be a vlog next Saturday about this. 7 p.m. Central European time, 1 p.m. Eastern Standard time, and 10 a.m. in the morning for you guys on the way on the left club. This is like a little foot stand. Uh, you can use books, you can use anything, but you have to like, for the real classical playing, hire the uh, position of your left leg. So as you can see, I'm putting my foot on this foot stand now. That way I've got the perfect position for my classical guitar right now. Your fingers are closer to your eyes. If you're like half blind like me, this makes things a lot easier, right? Get it? The second pro is your wrist position. Nothing's worse than playing like this. You don't want that. So if you play a classical piece, right? It's very easy to fret your left hand is very comfortable. The other very important thing about this position is your collarbone is straight. The, the position of your shoulders is plain straight. And the only thing that is the con in this position is you have to twist your spine a little bit to play. Meaning you're not sitting like with your spine like this, but you twist it a little bit to the left. Get it? But still your shoulders are straight. So that's the con and pros for this position. Let's move on to the position when you play music. And you can also play bonfire shit like Okay, if we move the guitar now to the right leg, you don't need to, any foot stand or anything. It's just like, it looks cooler, right? You, that's, this is bonfire. This is like... Today's gonna be the day. I'm gonna get demonetized for this one. And, Pro G chord. The cool thing is my spine is straight because I'm like playing like this, right? The con is what happens is because of the shape of the guitar, you upper your right arm or left arm if you play the other way around. And so I'm, I'm overdoing this, but you're sitting like this, right? So you don't have a straight shoulder position. Your left shoulder is gonna be lower than your right shoulder which causes your spine a little bit to like bend, although you're straight. I personally am a diverse guitar player, so if I play real classical stuff, if I play bonfire music, I'm not gonna do Wonder Wall again. Moving on to electric guitar positions, because I have changed recently how I, I like this environment, man. I have recently changed the position of my electric guitar. So uh, let's move on to uh, these kind of guys. Okay, all right, let's walk you through the all possible kind of heights of guitar playing. I'm sorry for the reflection, I can't help it. This is how I usually play guitar. 
<laughs> no, no, not gonna play this one. There's a rule that is called, I, I can't really say it in this video to not get demonetized. The rule is, right? So if you have a guitar in that position, it allows you to play riffs and chords and stuff, right? But here comes the thing, as soon as you play more challenging stuff, the jazz guy is like carrying the guitar under the chin. Ah, it's just not cool, you know? It's not called... So, it's... This is probably how most guitar players play. It also comes down like whether you hire the neck, how heavy the neck uh, or the head is on your guitar because some guitars just tend to go like this is almost impossible to play. I usually pull it up a little bit and that way I can play like chords, uh, riffs or anything. But here comes the thing, as soon as you play like demanding solos, you want to change that position a little bit to higher. So let me quickly do that and I'll be back. <laughs> a little bit higher. Yeah, this is pretty much how I would never play on a stage because it's just too high. Um, the higher your guitar is, the more it changes the, the angle of your wrist, well, the fretting hand. Um, I'm gonna probably put up a video here so you can see how it changes. And the combination of like playing a little higher is because it's more even to when you sit, right? And you practice sitting. And then you would stand up with the same position. It would be pretty much this one. Pretty close. You can play because your wrist is in a different angle. It's not like this. It's more like this. <laughs> So it's easier to play solo stuff because playing solo when your wrist is all the way low and your elbow is almost straight is very hard. Playing like this is almost like when you practice sitting. I do not like that I had to hire the position of my guitar and this one is not the one that I'm bringing. I'm bringing my Pia. Oh, by the way, let me talk a little bit about the tour. For the few people that haven't heard about the fact that I'm going to be in the States on tour for five weeks with my buddy Travis Larson. Now you know. <laughs> Here's something that kind of bugs me. And it, it's, it has nothing to do with the fact that we play a very intimate small tour. Uh, this happens to the biggest productions out there. As soon as you put out dates, like, hey, these are the tour dates. There is two ways as a fan how to react to those. You can have the same content put in a positive vibe or the same content put in a negative vibe. You do all this effort to book a tour, whether if it's a team, it's a booking agent, it's the band, whatever, it's artists. You put out these dates, right? And you play, let's say, you play at one place. You get comments like, oh, you're not playing in my neighborhood, bummer. And I'm thinking to myself, I am from Germany. I live in Germany. I am jumping on an aircraft to travel thousands of miles to make it to the United States of the America. I'm gonna cross the Atlantic Ocean from Europe to another continent, which is called North America. I'm gonna be on the road for 30 hours. And you're telling me you can't be driving for like an hour and a half to come see the show? Take the Pete Thorne example. Uh, I mean, my friend Pete Thorne was playing with this tour and I crossed country borders. I drove for two and a half hours to see him because he's from LA. He's in Europe. He's in another country, but it's drivable distance. You go see your friend, you go see the show. That's what you do. Let me explain it. I know I've got a lot of German followers. So let me explain it to you in a German example. It's like somebody announces a tour and say, hey, we're gonna play Hamburg. And then somebody from the city of Bremen is commenting like, bah, bummer, you're not playing in my neighborhood. Don't get your ass into a car and drive there. It's, I, I don't know, it, it bugs the shit out of me. Sorry, that was me venting. I'm sorry, if anybody feels offended, I'm sorry. That shit bugs me, man. 
And I know it bugs a lot of people. It's a whole different thing if you go like, come to Brazil, because that's amazing. I would love to play with this tour that Travis and I are gonna do, the whole concept of an evening with the interactive show. It's, it's, it's like a show, it's a clinic, it's everything. I'm hearing, what the hell is going on? Why am I hearing techno? I'm sorry if anybody feels offended. Come and see that show. It's interactive, it's fun, it's unique. And I would love to tour South America with this whole thing. The plan is to maybe bring it to Europe later this year. And uh, yeah, that's it. Sorry, I had to vent. All right, final notes on the guitar position thing. Uh, it's all about how you feel comfortable when you play. If your priority is like to look cool, um, then do that. If your priority is like to sound good, then do that. If you are trying to find like a compromise, then find a compromise. Wow, that's great life advice. <laughs> anyway, I hope you learned a little something here today. Bear with me if I don't continuously every Sunday put out a new Guitar Stuff episode while I am being on this five week tour. But I hope to see all of you out there on the road. That's why I'm gonna put the tour dates one more time at the end of this video. Come and see the tour. See you all out there. And uh, I'm gonna see you next Saturday for the vlog of Gen Tour preparation. You're my motherfucker! I promise you're gonna laugh your butt off. All right, that's it for this week. Mwah! Love you all my strawberries and see you next time. Bye!